What's up guys, Ben from Wagon Teaching here and today I'm going to talk to you about the five most important routines that you need to absolutely nail with your class to ensure that your days in the classroom run as smoothly as possible. sometimes that time is wasted because the children aren't quite sure what to do next or they don't come back from break time and settle as quickly as you would like. Do you sometimes find that there's a bit of an organisational mess with your children and so you find yourself doing lots of things for them? If so, then this is the video for you because I'm going to highlight the five most important routines that you need to make sure are absolutely perfect within your class to ensure that your day runs stress-free and as smoothly as possible. This video isn't about telling you exactly what should happen in your classroom, it's all about highlighting the different routines that are really important to make sure that you have a smooth running day. It's going to make sure that you're less stressed, but it's also going to make sure that you're not wasting time in the classroom that could be spent learning and having fun with your children. So the first classroom routine that I'm going to talk about today is the morning routine. Yes, the children coming in, registering, sitting down and getting ready for the first lesson. How often do you find that the children come in late or they don't seem as settled so that when you're ready to teach your first lesson, they're not really ready to go? What's really important in the morning routine is one, allowing the children to make sure they're organised and ready, but also getting their brain in the gear for learning. Some children may be coming from homes where it's a bit crazy in the morning, so it's really important that you and your classroom is set up and ready to allow the children to transition and get their brain to focus. So morning activities are really great for allowing the children to start to engage with learning. They can be fun, they can be practical, they don't have to be always learning focus so not always about English and maths etc it's all about getting that brain into focus so as the children come into the classroom make sure there's some kind of fun engaging activity for the children to do also make sure that the children know what things they're going to need for the day so visual timetables are great so they know that they need their, their pens and pencils or a calculator perhaps whatever they need for the day they can get organized ready on the table so that you don't have to do it for them and also they're ready for the lessons it's really frustrating as a teacher when you're ready to teach your first lesson the children haven't got what they need ready so make sure you've got a list of things that they need on the board as they come in a nice fun activity for them to get along with and drill those routines if they want need to hand in homework etc so every day will run like clockwork you can get on with the things that you need to do or just concentrate on greeting the children opposed to helping the children prepare for their first lesson and getting their brains ready to learn the second routine that's really important, particularly in primary school, is the lining up routine. How many times do you spend five, ten minutes getting children into line because they're arguing about who should be at the front, who's pushed in, who's in the back? Make sure that that routine is down. Now, some people like this routine to be really strict and some people like the routine to be slightly less, a bit more relaxed. And that's entirely up to you and depends what the children are like in your classroom. Some people go by girl by girl, some people have a line monitor who always fronts the line or they select one for the day or equally some people just drill in the idea that children actually doesn't matter which order you're in if the quicker you get to the line the quicker we're all going to get to the same place realistically at the same time make sure you practice the children lining up and transitioning through the school it's really good to do this at the beginning of the year to ensure that your children are used to the routines that you expect and it ensures that you can get from A to B really really quickly and minimize the amount of wasted time on the flip side of that as well, at the end of break times and the end of lunch times, make sure you instill the routine of how the children are going to transition back into class. The children are hacked up from outside, have been running around, and all of a sudden they're expected to come in and sit down and get on with some work. Really still, that's not going to happen. So how are you going to allow for the transition from uh, break time back into the classroom for the children to slowly calm down and get ready back for learning? And that goes back to the other point that I've talked about, the morning routine, where perhaps there's a brief, quick activity for them to do as they come in that hooks them back into the context of the classroom. Okay, number three, the third routine in this list 
is the self-help routine. Do you find that children are constantly at your desk saying, what should I do next? Have I done it right? I'm stuck, I can't do it. Lots of teachers have lots of different methods. We hear things like three before me, but basically all you want to do is instill the skills for allow the children to self-help. What can they do before they come to you first? It's gonna develop their independence. And it's also gonna develop their resilience. If a child is stuck, how can they help themselves or how can they get somebody else, another child, to help them before they require your assistance? It doesn't matter what routine that is, there's lots of great ideas out there, but it's really important to make sure that routine is solid so that you're not being bothered constantly by children that are meant to be working independently because your time is valuable and you want to be working with the children you want to work with and so you don't want to be distracted by the children that haven't got those self-help routines in their bank. Okay, the fourth routine that's really, really important, kind of links to the previous one, it's peer and self-assessment. This is all about allowing children to target set and identify mistakes. This can be practiced in the classroom in lots of different ways. Showing children waggles or wabbles and identifying mistakes can directly teach children how to evaluate pieces of work. The more the children develop their peer and self-assessment, the less marking you're gonna have to do. If the children can use success criteria or they can use checklists to make sure they've included certain things in their work, then ultimately that's going to save you time marking and feeding back. If they can do it themselves really, really well, then you're saving yourself time. So try and make sure that whatever class or whatever year group you're in, the children are developing age-appropriate self and peer assessment skills to support you as a teacher and ultimately develop their independence and their awareness of what they're doing really well and what they need to do next to set their own target. Okay, the final one. I think this is, I don't know whether the most important one or the least important one. I think possibly the least important one, but it feels important is the child's organisational and presentation skills. So I'm talking about cutting out, sticking in. All those skills that are really important to ensure that your books look great, but also to save you time. I know so many teachers that say, well, the children can't cut out, or the children can't stick it in, so I do it for them. Do not do that for them. The children at all ages can be taught how to cut out, how to glue, it's all about fine motor skills, how to stick in and save you time. You should not be spending hours cutting out, sticking in, just because you think that children can't do it. They may not be able to do it, they may not be able to do it yet. Teach them how to do it. Spend time in the afternoons, teach them how to cut straight, give them practical activities. It's in the EYFS curriculum, so why not add it to the year one, two curriculum to help them develop their cutting out skills and they're sticking in skills, so that will allow you to be a teacher, not a gluer and sticker. The other type of skills I'm talking about is organisational skills, of how they get themselves organised in between lessons with handling books and transitioning between one lesson to another. So when you go from English to maths, or maths to English, how do the children respond? The quicker they do it, the more organised they are, and you are, the more time you're gonna have for the learning and the lessons, so you're not gonna feel like you're running out of time because you wasted it in between transitions. So a really good way of doing this is having different trays to hand in books. So having a chaffer like trays is a really great way to develop children's assessment skills, but also allows children to quickly hand in books ready to transition into another lesson. So basically if a child is doing, thinks they've done really well in a the lesson, they'll pop it in the green tray. Orange if they think they've done all right, and then red perhaps if then they feel like they've not done as well as they could have done, or they've found it a bit difficult. That's really great and saves you time in the long run because you know that you pick up and mark those red books first to pick out and support those children that may have found that lesson a bit more difficult. You mark the orange next, and the green ones you know will probably be easier and quicker to mark and you can spend less time on because they've understood it. That's obviously if the children have developed great self-assessment skills. But the more they do it, the better their skills will be. It's also really important to give children roles and responsibilities of handing things out and taking things in. So maths monitors may hand out maths equipment, book monitors may hand out or collect in books. All of those different monitors will play a part in helping you transition quickly from one lesson to another and would ultimately save you jobs and time. So those are my top five routines that I think you should get absolutely solid within your class to ensure that your day runs as smoothly and as stress-free as possible. It's all about saving you time and jobs. It's all about making the most of the time that is within the school day. 
and it's ultimately about making sure that children are as independent and as resilient as possible and it's ultimately about making sure that children are more independent and resilient so i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm ben from waggle teaching make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel to find lots more teaching idea videos please comment on the youtube box below with any ideas of how you have developed these routines in your classroom have a really great day.